Welcome back to the 1980s. Nostalgia is a funny old game. And let me just clear something up here. If you don't have a friend who owned an Amstrad CPC back in the day, you're the problem. Oh, and by the way, this is not a history lesson about the Amstrad. This is more a video about those graphic artists out there that saw all those specky ports to the Amstrad CPC and thought, Ugh, we've got to do better than this. So, like me, they just wanted a quality on the Amstrad. And the Amstrad graphics, including the colour palette, left a positive early impression. And I couldn't think of a better way to kick this video off than with Trantor, the last Stormtrooper. It not only looks terrific, but it's doing all the things that the Amstrad isn't supposed to be able to do. It's one of Amstrad's many Rembrandts. Encoder David Perry and graphics artist Nick Brutti did the Amstrad proud. Now this was a big deal back in the day. There was nudity long before you could type naked in your search engine. Kids had Stormlord. It's a fantastic, in fact, it's a masterclass of an adventure from Raphael Seco. And the graphics and sound alone are stunning. In fact, for a while on the Amstrad CPC, in my humble opinion, it was the best looking game I'd seen for some time. Suffice to say, it makes great use of the Amstrad's color palette. There were two things guaranteed from anything released by Dynamic Software. The games were brutally difficult and they nearly always came with pretty graphics. After the War Scrolls nice and it makes tremendous use of the Amstrad's colour palette and if you're into mindless blasting this takes some beating. What's also interesting about this is the the graphics modes are split between the top and bottom part of the screen. So the game area is in mode 0 and the scoring area is in mode 1. David Perry and Nick Brutti strike again on the Amstrad with Savage. The whole thing is finished in 16 colour throughout the three stages. And whilst it's no PlayStation 5 in the graphics department, back in the day, this was pushing the Amstrad CPC nearer to its limits. But just look at it, it's a thing of beauty. It's so smooth, it's fast. And the little touches to the animation you can see haven't gone unnoticed. I'm convinced more than ever. When I look back at the Amstrad CPC graphics, I feel so lucky to have owned this computer. The Amstrad was where it was at. I think if the computer would have been released maybe a year earlier and sold a few more million, not only might it have been the lead platform, we'd have probably seen a hell of a lot more games. With this level of quality, I seriously, I want to celebrate this game as a work of art. And look at that. Goodness me. It must have been so exciting to work as a graphic artist on the Amstrad. I remember buying this and I was really impressed, especially with the graphics uh, and the way the waves came at you and the colour in the background. So I added it just because at the time, I guess it was that shock value. And I loaded it up recently just to see if I'd imagined uh, what I'd originally played uh, in the graphics department. And it still looks good. And the bonus is, there's a good challenge. I know it doesn't scroll, but just look at it. It's absolutely fabulous to look at throughout, throughout all the levels. There's no question for me, this is one of Amstrad's finest. And it came from Ocean as well, Ocean Software. And we have to remember that this would have been released in 1987. And the strength of the game is it just gets better to look at the further you progress. It's a cult classic on the Amstrad CPC and I've not spoken to anybody that doesn't love it. It's not perfect, things don't move as smoothly as I'd prefer, as I'd like. But the abundance of 16 colour and the well-defined sprites. Yes, there's a little bit of flicker on the main sprite, but apart from that, the rainbows actually look like rainbows, unlike the other 8-bit versions. And this video isn't even scratching the surface. There's boss fights, there's all sorts of different levels. It's a fantastic little arcade conversion, and it's done the Amstrad, the 8-bit proud.
This is actually one of my favorite platform games on the Amstrad CPC. It's also one of the best looking. My wife and I are watching the Adams Family spin-off on Netflix Wednesday, and that's really good. But it reminded me of this game, so I went back in and played it for a little bit, and it's still bloody good. It's also worth tracking down a long play of this game, and you'll get a sense for how big the game is and how well done the graphics are throughout. Ah, uh, Xenon. Terrible idea to add this one. But it's all fueled by nostalgia at the end of the day. And I remember loading this up and uh, I was quite impressed with this. I thought it was a decent attempt of one of the best 16-bit shooters. I also think we did well to get this um, as a hand-me-down. I'm not sure if anybody in their right mind would play this today. But I'm just making the point that back then... I thought it looked really good. This is basically Thundercats. <laughs> hear the magic, hear the roar. It's a difficult game, but if you persevere with it, you can really get some fun out of it, some enjoyment out of it. I've played it on all the 8 bits, uh, the Commodore 64, the ZX Spectrum, but I prefer the Amstrad. The scroll is decent, the animation is decent, the graphics are really colourful. And this is another game from David Perry. And the graphics from a guy called Nigel Brown John. <laughs> Try as I might, I can't get off the first level. I used to be fantastic at this game. And the second level sees you riding around in the head of the Statue of Liberty, flinging fireballs at uh, all sorts of monsters and ghosts coming towards you. And from memory, the Marshmallow Man is at the end of the stage as well, and it looks terrific. A chap called Steve Green did the graphics, and he also later went on in 2004 to do the graphics for Serious Sam. Remember kids, stay puffed. Every 8-bit owner knows about Batman. On the Amstrad, it's probably one of the better games and I suspect it would feature in anybody's top 10. And I personally love the graphics in this game. Absolutely love the detail, the sprite animation, and the fact that you can flick your rope out and you're transcended to the other side of the screen instantly. Just love everything about this game, and especially the graphics. Absolute thing of beauty. Here's another terrific game on the Amstrad that hardly ever gets a mention. I really like it, and uh, I especially like the first level and the third stage, which is a shoot 'em up section. For me, it represents everything that was great about 8-bit, what it stood for, and I especially love the graphics in this game. They are some of the best. So I'm not sure why it doesn't get talked about more, but enough of that, we're here for the graphics. And for an 8-bit, these more than hold up. Good old Danny boy. You can't beat Nick Brucey and David Perry. They strike again with Dan Dare 3. The first two Dan Dare games, I quite liked them. I thought they looked really good. Uh, especially the first one because it had that comic book style. But the controls were a bit iffy. What we've got here is quite majestic. They really pulled out all the graphical stops. Sometimes I have to pinch myself and remind myself that this was an 8-bit, an Amstrad CPC. Graphically, it's easily one of the best. I've included Agent X2 purely for this level alone. The other levels you could take or leave. You know, I just remember being blown away by the smoothness of the scroll and the look and feel of the game. The visuals are done by Mark Wilson, Stephen Tatlock and John Tatlock. And like the graphics, just listen to that music by Tim Folin. Truly magnificent. Barbarian is the reason I look down on all 8-bit computers equally. I wouldn't have been surprised back in the day if this had been running on an Atari ST 
or later on the Commodore Amiga. It's that good. Pound for pound, the Amstrad CPC is not only the heaviest 8-bit computer. <laughs> oh gosh, it, uh, it was often capable of the most beautiful display as well. I can't think of anything sensible to say about this game. It's a really good racing game, bike game, and the animation on the bike is fantastic. The speed update is probably on par with Martex, Nigel Mansell's uh, Grand Prix. But I think the thing that captures it for me, the thing that pulls me in, is how fast everything is and how good everything holds together and looks at top speed. I think it's safe to say that this is probably the best shoot 'em up on the Amstrad CPC. It's also probably one of the best looking. I mean, the Amstrad CPC is one of the most peculiar computers, which is, <clears throat> you know, one of the reasons I do rather like it. And people waste lots of the time trying to criticize it. And yes, things could have turned out better, but I also think people should be rather more patriotic about it. It's British. I think most of us remember ZX Spectrum ports as a bad dream. The Amstrad CPC was the third machine and by that very existence that means it was top of the pile and we had every right to expect games that took the machine near its capability. And this one looks flipping brilliant. It was a disgrace that we even got specy ports when you see things like this. And I'm one of those whingers that moans about them all the time. This was one of my big delusional moments on the Amstrad CPC back in 1986. I was convinced that this was arcade perfect. I mean, I saw screenshots in computer and video games and other magazines at the time. But until I'd actually played the arcade version, this was like a honeymoon period for me. And compared to a lot of the games on the Amstrad around this time, this one really stood out. Get Dexter looked absolutely amazing, but this second one took it to another level. I remember thinking, my God, what's going on? The original took me by surprise. The second one, I just wasn't expecting, caught me cold. This was just the boost the Amstrad CPC needed at the time. And I talked this game and the Amstrad up like there was no tomorrow. The best thing is it's all beautifully designed and really well animated. I first remember seeing the Commodore 64 version and I was like, oh gosh, that's absolutely appalling. So I wasn't holding out much for the Amstrad CPC arcade conversion. I still had shades of Outrun in my mind. But the one saving grace is that I remember the same people that worked on Wet Le Mans were working on the Amstrad version of Chase HQ. And just look at it, it's bloody marvellous. God, I remember this one. It's completely bonkers. In fact, I've mostly forgotten how it works. But what can't be denied is the quality of the graphics. They're absolutely brilliant. You just have to make sure you see this game because it uses the Amstrad color palette and graphics in the way it was intended. You probably can't see it now, but back in the day, this amazed me. There's a lovely metallic sheen to this game. It really stands out. It's got that techno feel to it. I just remember having lots of fun with it and it was from Ocean Software. And when I saw these graphics, I thought to myself, oh, I've got lots to look forward to. This is the way it's gonna be from now on. And look at that little left-hand side scrolling printer. It works really well, it's brilliant. It's definitely one of my favorites and it's one of my favorites to look at. Now, according to Amtix, 
February 1987. They said that the graphics are very colourful, better than the Commodore 64 version, and it's a very highly polished piece of programming. So I'll definitely take that. And it's always nice to know, have it confirmed, that we've got one over the Commodore 64. It's one of my personal favourites, and I absolutely love the graphics. Stay away from those ghosts. Yeah, I'm not sure what to make of this one as a game. I preferred Pac-Mania. You just couldn't see enough of the screen for this one. And it was really difficult to finish. The graphics, though, I think personally just up things a notch. I love the colour that's being used and the smoothness of the scroll. Why on earth didn't Pac-Mania look this good? Still back in the day, I played the tape out of this. Now, although I found this one a little bit boring, a little bit too slow, but graphically, it doesn't really put a foot wrong. So it wasn't utterly miserable. I think its biggest failure is that it's just repetitive. And yes, it's another example that the Amstrad CPC can do shoot 'em ups and it can scroll perfectly well. And just look at all those sprites on screen at once. I mean, my problem with this game, Mr. Helly, is that anybody I knew back in the day that knew anything about anything told me that games like this wouldn't work on the Amstrad CPC. You know, not just from 64 fanboys or ZX Spectrum fanboys, from anybody, anybody who had a vague idea of how this stuff worked. So when I saw this, it was like, come of the hour, come of the computer. Now, I can't remember if this game hit the bottom of the barrel, you know, if it was any good or not, but I remember the graphics and I really liked them. They really stood out and they get bigger and bolder and better the more you play. In fact, I don't think there was anything wrong with this game other than it was really difficult, but I think the graphics are good. I like them. I think this one, Squeak, went down really well. And it's probably one of the better games on the Amstrad. But it looks absolutely terrific. Massively cute, but terrific. I think on the 16-bit versions, the game actually scrolls. And according to Computer and Video Games back in 1989, they said, incredibly, even cuter sprites than on the ST and the Amiga versions. Talking about great graphics, not many games on the Amstrad can hold a candle to sorcery. In fact, Amtix back in November 1985 said, to date, graphically, the best arcade adventure yet for your Amstrad. And I don't think many people would argue with that. Yes, there's lots of fantastic looking games on the Amstrad. Some I haven't even covered, but yes, this is up there. I imagine that many will argue that this is the best graphically on the Amstrad CPC. And Computer and Video Games back in July 1991, they awarded this game 94%, but they said that they were amazed by the quality of the Amstrad conversion. The animation is as show-stopping as ever. The gameplay is great and there's loads to keep you occupied. Can't argue with that. This is late in the Amstrad's life. Super Cauldron. It's doing things in 64K that I wasn't even aware the Amstrad could do. And it's also one of the best games I've played on the Amstrad. I think it also pushes the Amstrad, the color palette, and the multi-directional scroll uh, further than it's probably been pushed before. And when I say that, I mean from a stock Amstrad CPC 64K machine. Now this is a special game on the stock Amstrad CPC. It's 128K to run, but it's an even better game on the Amstrad Plus machines. Well, I say it's a better game, it just looks better, infinitely better. But for a stock Amstrad CPC, this is a thing of wonder, a 
thing of beauty. It's absolutely magnificent. It's delightful. It's a shame that this game doesn't feature any sound, but it's got everything. And if you played it on the Amiga, then you'll understand how good it is for an 8-bit. Even the text in the comic book sections has a nice feel about it. It's just a really well put together package. You can tell, you can see that whoever did the graphics on this game, it was a real labour of love. They really understood the Amstrad colour palette. I remember the first time I saw this, Winter Games, and it did, it blew me away. And uh, I remember shouting at everyone, come and have a look at this, it's unbelievable. <laughs> I was probably only about eight. I love looking back at all of these games. I mean, there's not much to look forward to at the moment uh, in the UK. I mean, we've had Brexit, we've had three prime ministers, two monarchs, a recession, a European war, exit from the quarterfinals of the World Cup again. Apparently we finished second in the Eurovision, but nobody watched that. So the only thing I look forward to uh, outside of my family and relate to right now is retro gaming and none made a bigger impact on the Amstrad CPC in the graphic department than Zypho's fantasy. Yes, the gameplay, the controls are a little bit ropey, but as you can see, look at that. Look at that. And there's so many games. I haven't even mentioned Akari Warriors, Renegade, Target Renegade, Combat School, in fact, Dragon Ninja from memory looked really good. It was a nice scroll. Gauntlet was really good as well, and Gauntlet 2. In fact, Gremlin Graphics released Nigel Mansell uh, World Championship in the latter stages of the Amstrad's life, and that was pretty special as well. Graphically, there's a lot to celebrate about the Amstrad CPC. It really did hold its own. And as time's gone on, there's been really good progression in the Amstrad community. It's more alive now than ever. Uh, the game that I would cite as probably having the best graphics of all time is Pinball Dreams. And we've still got Vespertino to come. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, leave a comment, and let me know if there's a game I missed. Now, if you've watched up until this point, Next are some honourable mentions. Enjoy!